if there's one thing to know about me, it's that I just cannot force content for the sake of content. Like, if I'm not feeling motivated, I just cannot force myself to sit down and record. So, thank you to everybody who's been so patient and wonderful and anybody that clicked on this video because they were waiting for me to be back. I love you so much and thank you. I'm very excited today because I finally finally have been back in my reading mode. I read 16 books in January and there was so many fabulous, fabulous books in that bunch that I'm just super excited to share with you guys. I'm going to share obviously every single book that I read throughout the month and let you guys know what they're about and what I thought about them. I literally just had not been reading. Like I totally bombed my Goodreads goal last year because I didn't read for like the last three months of the year. I don't know what happened, but January started and I was like, okay, we need to like reel it in. We need to get back in the reading, the reading mood. So my first initial thought was I needed to read something fun and lighthearted and just an author that maybe I was familiar with already. So I knew that going in, I would understand the writing style. I would be able to just get into it. And so for me, I decided to read the Puck series by Helena Hunting, which is a long series but it consists of really short, fast-paced books. So starting the first week of January, I just hopped into the Puck series and I managed to finish the whole entire series during the month of January. So that's six books. I also read one of the novellas that fits in there. This series follows a bunch of hockey players and their significant others. And this series, it's crazy. Like, it's super fun. I love a good hockey romance, so that's one thing. But the way that Helena Hunting writes her characters, specifically for this series, they're all just so crazy and quirky and fun. And you definitely have to have an open mind to go into this series because these characters are actually like off the walls insane a little bit. But it's super fun and I really enjoyed reading them. Most of the books in this series received about a three or four star rating from me except for one of the books which was book five, Pucked Off. They all like pucked, pucked up, pucked over, pucked off was my favorite and that's number five in the series and that was just my favorite, favorite couple. That book felt very singular, like you could almost just read it on its own. Um, I do recommend reading this as a series, even though it is a series that consists of just many companion novels. Novels, I feel like reading it as one just is so much better and it makes a lot more sense because you really do get introduced to the couples in the previous books. It's not like it's a random character you heard of once, like they're in the previous book and then you're into their book in the next one. So I recommend reading it as a whole cohesive series, but I will say that book five kind of felt detached from the rest, but it almost made it for a unique reading experience. So really, really loved book five. It was my absolute favorite, but I read the series also. I should have started off by saying this, but because a really long time ago last year I read Little Lies by Helena Hunting which is her spin-off of the Puck series and the Lie for a Lie series I believe is what it's called. Um, this is like those combined about the kids of the characters and I read that first so everybody was like go read Puck like what are you doing so now I have to read the Lie for a Lie series which I'm planning to do so super exciting stuff. Read the Puck series if you're in a reading slump. It seriously got me out so quick and I just binged read the whole series and it was fantastic. I had so much fun with it. The next book that I read I actually finished. I started reading it last year and completely neglected it um, at about the 60% mark. I don't know why, it just started feeling a little dry for me, so I put it down and I noticed that it was still sitting in my Kindle library untouched this last month. So I was like, I should just honestly read this. Like, I'm at the 60%. It's not like I DNF'd it at like 20 and it was like still the early stages. Like, I read a lot of this book, so I decided to finish out the book and I actually ended up really liking it. I gave it a three out of five stars, so it wasn't like my favorite thing ever, but I still really enjoyed it. This was an age gap book that follows a girl who needs housing assistance and this guy who she meets who ends up letting her move into his house and they get married because she has a lot of medical conditions and she doesn't have insurance and he offers her his insurance if they were to get married so it's kind of like a marriage of convenience age gap trope it's a really fun one there was definitely a lot of heavier topics covered in this book but also had some light-hearted moments I really really love Carrie Ann Cole's other books that I've read I've 
pretty much read all of her books, I think. This is the last one I needed to finish. And while I do enjoy her other series more than this book that I just read, I still thought it was pretty good. And if you're into any of those tropes, you'd probably really enjoy it. The next book that I read was actually the first of a larger series that I don't really plan on finishing, but the book was called Irresistible by Melanie Harlow, and it's a part of the Cloverleaf Farm series. I gave this book three out of five stars as well. I just was really drawn to the trope from this book, so I wanted to read it without the intention of kind of finishing off the series, but I ended up liking it as a standalone. It follows a couple that is a single dad and a nanny. They are like older. She's like in her late 20s and he's like late 30s I'm pretty sure so there's a little bit of an age gap but it's like they're older. They actually work at a company together. She is employed by her dad who owns the company and he's also employed by her dad so they kind of know each other from work and she's been nannying for him for a while because he had a wife who left him and yeah there's kind of a romance that comes about in the book. It was super fast paced honestly. I think that's why I gave it three stars. It was a fun read for sure and I enjoyed it while I read it but it didn't really leave a lasting impression and the characters didn't really like pop out that much for me so I think that's why I rated it on the lower end of the scale but I still really enjoyed it and if you're into the like small town cute romance series I think you'd probably enjoy it. I'm literally looking at my list and I forgot I read this next book. This one is called Making Up and it's also by Helena Hunting who wrote the Puck series and this is book four in her Shacking Up series. So obviously I didn't read the whole series. I just picked this one out of the series to read. So if it says anything, you can totally read this series out of order. I'm not planning on reading the whole series. I just was really drawn to this plot in particular. It's about a girl who works at a sex toy shop and a guy who comes in to buy a bunch of bachelor party items and they just kind of have this quirky interaction where he finds himself really drawn to her and asks her out and they end up going on a date. I gave this book a three out of five stars I believe. Yeah three out of five stars. I enjoyed it. It was fun. This book really kept me on edge. There was a lot of plot twists that I wasn't expecting but at the end of the day again it just didn't really grab me like I wanted it to. Like the characters were kind of forgettable in my opinion. For me to rate a book five stars the characters just have to be so real to me and this book I enjoyed the plot I thought it was fun but the characters just fell a little short for me so I think that's why I rated it a little bit lower but I still thought it was fun I'm not planning on finishing off the series I'm pretty sure that the series just consists of a bunch of like meet cute books so if that's what you're into you'd probably like it I don't know what was wrong with me this month but I read so many books from series and I like started in the middle of the series I don't know I was kind of unhinged because the next book I read is called Just Roommates by Charity Farrell and it's book five in the Blue Beach series which I'm not reading the rest of the series but I gave this book a three stars as well. This is a book that I actually saw on TikTok and the TikTok made it seem so enticing and I was like I need to read this book it sounds crazy and then when I read it I was like this doesn't even feel like what the TikTok said it was and I was really disappointed by that I think so that's why I gave it only three stars but the story was pretty fun. It follows a girl who falls for her roommate slash her boss because he actually owns a bar in her small town and she ends up working at that bar with him after she gets divorced and so the story kind of follows them over the years. There's a few different areas where the time will change a few years later and so on. Um, so you see a little bit of their progression um, throughout the years which I do sometimes enjoy sometimes it doesn't work but in this case I thought it was pretty good but again it just kind of fell a little flat for me. I was expecting more with this fabulous TikTok that I saw and it just didn't feel like what the TikTok promised and I was like I don't like this so kind of just like wasn't what I was expecting but I still did enjoy the book. I'm sure the rest of the series is really great as well but I'm not really interested in continuing it at this time. Okay, the next book I really, really liked. This was called Only Ever Yours by Nikki Ash, and this was a standalone, finally. Goodness gracious. Um, but this one follows a girl who is really struggling to make ends meet. She needs a new job. She doesn't have it. She's about to get evicted. And her friend offers her a position to work as an escort for the night and make a bunch of money. And she's like, I literally don't want to do that, but I actually have no choice. So she decides to go and be an escort for the night. And her partner ends up being this man who's super rich and has a bunch of money because his parents both passed away and left all this fortune and this huge business behind for him and so he ends up using her as an escort that night but he instantly can just tell that she's the one and he wants to be with her and protect her and care for her and the story kind of goes from there. I don't want to spoil too much because this story actually
actually was pretty insane and there was a lot of twists and turns that I was not expecting, but I will say the one thing about this book that could be iffy for some people is that it's super insta-lovey, but it's almost like supposed to be like that. Like I'm not sure if I can fault it because the main guy character is like, I've been told my whole life, like, when I know she's the one, I'll know, and finally I'm meeting this girl, and she's the one, and I can tell, and whatever. So he just really goes after this girl heavy. So it feels, like, super insta-lovey, but it's kind of just, like, his character. So I don't know. You'd have to read it and let me know what you think, but I still really enjoyed the story. I thought it was super juicy. Like I said, tons of twists and turns throughout that I was just not expecting with this type of story, but I really enjoyed it. I thought that the way that they meet was very interesting and unique, and I overall really enjoyed it. I finished it in like one sitting, so if that says anything, it's a good book. The next three books that I read feel super random, but I swear to god I always see this book everywhere, and it's called Games We Play by Dana Isley. Isley? Sorry about that, I don't know how to say it, but I read that one, and then Secrets We Hunt, which they're both a part of the One Night series, and then I read Dipped in Holly, so that's another one of her books that's kind of a standalone. I gave them all three stars. Um, these were super, super fast-paced, almost like novella-style books that were just very, like, smut heavy and not a lot of plot. I don't know how I happened upon them, but I read the first one and I was like, okay, that was like a super quick read. I might as well just read like everything that she's written because I'm trying to get my Goodreads goal up, you know? Last year I failed and now I'm like, I need to, I need to meet my goal. I'm only trying to read 52 books because, because I feel like that's attainable, but who knows, maybe it'll all change it later. But I read all three of these. I gave them three stars each. They all follow like different couples. Um, the first one was random. It was like the guy was this anonymous like internet persona who happens to have like a like a BDSM thing going on and this girl comes to his house to interview him and they end up making a connection. So that was that book. The second one was like a ex-friends to lovers kind of book and the last one was kind of like an age gap romance. So there was a lot of different different things but it was fun. They were short and it was really easy to read so if you're looking for something like that maybe you would enjoy these but they weren't like blowing me away, if you know what I mean. Okay, the last book I read in January was called Knockout by Tracy Ward, and this is a part of the North Star series, which I looked up, and, like, the second book is just the first book in another character's POV, and then the third book I'm just probably not gonna read, but this book I found in particular because I was on the hunt for a good sister's boyfriend book. I don't know why, but that, like, trope is just kind of juicy to me. If you want a whole video for those, I have, like, so many good recommendations, but it's just, like, a juicy trope to me. I wanted to read something fun, so I found this somewhere, decided to read it, and I actually ended up really liking it. My only critique was that it just ended too soon, even though it was a pretty long book, but it still felt like it ended too soon just like with how slow the burn was throughout the story. I was like, this is where we're leaving off, like I need more, um, but I did really like it. There was definitely some times where I was frustrated with the characters or there was a little bit of like immaturity, but I can often look past that if the story is juicy enough, and for me it was, but I really, really liked it. And again, if you're into the like fun, kind of like scandalous trope of sister's boyfriend, I thought it was a good read. So I still am in shock that I read 16 books last month considering I didn't read a single page October, November, December. Like I literally don't know what was wrong with me, but I'm so happy to be back into the swing of things. I'm currently reading a book right now too, so I know by the end of February I'll have another fabulous wrap-up for you guys. Super curious what you guys have been reading. If you have any recommendations, of course leave them down below, but hopefully I'll be back soon with another recommendations video for you guys other than just what I've currently been reading. If you have any suggestions or tropes that you want recommendations for, of course let me know about those as well. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and just sticking around to talk about books with me. It's just the most fun ever and I enjoy it so very much, so thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will talk to you all very, very soon, and I love you all. Bye!